Wow, it's 2021 already. God, you have been awesome. God, you have been amazing. God, you deserve all of our glory, all of our adoration. You have been a good, good father. It's a good time to praise God. God brought us through all the things that happened in 2020. And we are grateful. And we are also grateful that we are in the first month of 2021. And we are grateful to God for that. So could you please go put on your dancing shoe and be in the mood of Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. So let's close our eyes and let's pray to our maker who has kept us till 2021 and we know he that has begun a good thing in our lives will be able to accomplish it in jesus name mighty father we say thank you thank you for all that you are doing we are super 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 excited we are grateful because we're able to see january 2021 Father, we bless your name. Lord, even as we praise you, we ask that you help us to praise you as we ought to. Give us the energy to worship you. And at the end of the day, let all glory and adoration be given unto you. For in Jesus' amazing name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. <laughs>
I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praise, singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praise, singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praise. Walk through. He helped a boy bring a giant right down. 
know God made me And I know God loves me And He knows What's best for me Cause He knows Every single thing And I believe His promise is true Cause everything He says He will do On a Sunday Worship and I need all of you to be in the mood of worship. You close your eyes, you put your hands together. You can kneel down if you want to kneel down, but we need to stay focused. Are you ready?
Father, we thank you because you're a good, good Father. We thank you because we are loved by you. Lord, even as we are about to study your word, we ask in the name of Jesus, you will teach us yourself. Give us understanding of your word in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, we ask that you'll be in our midst in Jesus' name. Thank you, Abba Father, because this word that we will hear will run with them in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' amazing name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Happy, happy new year, influencers. Hello, and how are you doing this Sunday? This is the first Sunday in 2021, and it's our Thanksgiving Sunday. Hallelujah. And we are thankful, we are thankful because God has kept us, God has kept all our children, God has been faithful, he's been kind, he's been helpful, he's been amazing, God has just been amazing. And I hope you are grateful from the bottom of your hearts. Today, we'll be praying and committing this year into God's hands at the end of this discussion. So please stay with us, pay attention and stay focused till the end. All right, so I hope you have your materials ready, your Bible, your notebook, your pen, God's favorite house devotional, your offering. You have all the things you need to have ready, ready. Um, I don't want to have to say every time that if you don't have it ready, always have it ready, okay? Great, great. So what did we do last week? You see, if you have your notebook and your pen, you can always take notes and remember, you can just flip to the page, the previous page, and remember. The topic was what? Was what? Just do it. Just do it. Um, some of the things we learned when God asks you to do something, just do it because he's planning to do something greater for you. Um, and we also pray that we'll have a tangible relationship with God. And I pray and declare over you that you will have a tangible relationship with God in Jesus' name. Um, we also, um, God used a boy's name to pass his message across to the king um, in the learnings last week. What was that boy's name? Can you remember? Yes. Shia Jashab. No matter how bad it looks, God will turn around the situation. No matter how bad it looks. Just trust that God will always turn around the situation. God will resurrect every situation that is bothering you. This was also a prayer that we prayed last week. And there will always be hope. There will always be growth. And there will always be restoration with God. And when God asks you to do something, we shouldn't start sounding spiritual or disobey but we should just do it we also should we also learn that we shouldn't be like an old christian feeling that we know all and can predict god because of our experience no matter our age and no matter your age we are to listen and to obey god always and we must be quick to listen to god and obey his instructions we shouldn't just follow god's instructions written in the bible because we understand it we should do it because he has a bigger picture. He knows and he sees better and knows more than we do. We shouldn't just pick and choose the ones we like or we don't. Oh, I like these instructions. I don't like these instructions. But we should listen to God because he is God. Our life will go much better if we obey God because God knows everything and knows much more than us. We should also listen to our parents and teachers. We also pray that we receive the grace to consistently align with God's heart and do all that he requires of us in Jesus' name. So that was all we learned last week. Always revise your notes during the week. Great. So today we'll be talking about all sufficient. All sufficient. You're going to tell me the meaning of that word shortly, but let's go on. Start thinking about it. <laughs> All right. So our memory verse for today is taken from Philippians 2, 9. And it says, Therefore, God has elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that are the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. 
and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. That is amazing. Let's take that again. Philippians 2.9 and it says, Therefore God has elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that are the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus is Lord. Hmm. Every knee must bow. Every knee must bow. Why should every knee bow to Jesus? You might even be out there and you're saying, who is Jesus? And why should I bow to Jesus? Let's go back a bit in Philippians 2. Let's go to Philippians 2, 5 to 8 to just know who this Jesus is. It says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as human being when he appeared in human form. I hope we're learning more about Jesus. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. That is who Jesus is. That's what he did for us. He came to save all of us. And then what did verse 9 say? It says, therefore, that is because he obeyed and completely humbled himself, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. And when you bow, it is also physically, it also physically demonstrates humility before God. When you bow your knees before God and before Jesus, it's to physically demonstrate your humility before God when you, when you go on your knees in worship. We do see in films and cartoons that people kneel before royalty, before kings, before queens. And there are stories in the Bible of even kings and queens demanding people to kneel before them. How much more the king of kings and the lord of lords, the lord of the whole earth. Both in the New and Old Testament, people kneel before God. So many examples, so, so many examples. Even people who didn't know Jesus, who Jesus was, they knelt before him. The three wise men, they knelt before Jesus as a baby. He was just a baby when the three wise men, old men, knelt before him. They worshipped him. The woman by the fountain, the woman with the issue of blood. You know, when they saw the stars, the wise men, they were overjoyed and they came and bowed down and they worshipped him and they gave him gifts. Also, the man with leprosy, he came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Even when people are asking Jesus for things, you know, they kneel before him. It is because God gave him a name above all names. Yes. God glorified Jesus, highly exalting him and giving him the name that is above every name. This was done not just to increase authority, but to affirm that the man, Jesus, the man that we all know as Jesus, who is God as well, is indeed the word. And in him dwells all the fullness of Godhead bodily. He should not in anything anymore be compared or regarded as lower than God. Hallelujah. So the first word in the first sentence in the devotional for today says, every knee bows to Jesus. And we've explained why every knee bows to Jesus. The second thing there is that your God 
is stronger than their God. Your God with the capital G is stronger than their God. What is this referring to? Every other God is a small letter G God. Our God, who is capital letter um, G God, is stronger than every other God. When you put them side by side, our God is stronger, our God is bigger, he is higher than any other, he is wiser than any other, all powerful, awesome in power. Because he is stronger, he will always win. There is no reason to be afraid. If you have a God who will always win, there is absolutely no reason to be afraid. So I want you to say to yourself, calm down, call your name and say, let me, let me, use, let me, let me do it. Let me show you what you need to do. Esther, calm down. You don't need to be afraid. There is no reason to be afraid. I want you to call your name and say to yourself, I will not be afraid. In this new year, you will not be afraid. The second reason why you should not be afraid or worry is what? God is with you. It says God is with us. What does that mean? You know, sometimes my daughter, she's afraid of the thunder or when it rains or firecrackers or knockouts, bangers, you know, whatever name you call it in your country or where you are. When she comes and sleeps in my arms in the night, she's no longer afraid. Why? Because she believes that whatever it is can't harm her because she's with her parents. Imagine your biggest superhero. Some of you have their pictures in your room. Or imagine the president. If the president is with you, you know he has all the resources and all the protection to offer. So you know you don't have to be afraid because you have all the resources. You have the protection that the president or the king can offer. How much more? Almighty God, our mighty God, who made the president and all of us. What the president has is like a dot. What the president can offer you is like a dot compared to what our God can do. So our God is not only stronger, but he is also with us. Isaiah 7, 14 says, All right then, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. He lives in us. He is in us. And so he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. So you do not have to be afraid because your God is stronger and your God is with you. However, the world does not see the Christ as we see him. The world may see Christ as an ornament that is like a decoration or beautification or like an exclamation. Today, the world perceives Christ as a swear word. Can you imagine? <laughs> when you're watching some movies, when some people say Jesus as an exclamation, they bleep it out. That means you can't hear the word, just like any other swear word. I want you to know today that the name Jesus is not a swear word, and it is not a name to be, you know, to, to be used as an exclamation or decoration or beautification. No. The name of Jesus is high and exalted. God has given a, a name above all names. And when you use the name of Jesus, it brings solutions to you. It's, a, it's unbelievable the way the world uses the name of Jesus. I mean, they see him as a name. No, don't see Jesus like that. Worship him and reference him as your Lord and Savior. We see Jesus as the all-sufficient God. We must see him as the all-sufficient. Why? Because all things were created in Christ. The fullness of God dwells in him. Every human being can be made complete in Jesus because he is the hope of glory. And because all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden 
in Christ. And this is in the Bible, in Colossians 1.9. All the treasures of wisdom and riches are hidden in Christ. So there is no wisdom you need. There is no riches you need that is not in Christ. Divine provision is in Christ. All authority, number five, all authority has been given to Christ and all things are under the authority of Christ. That should just make you go to bed because anything that wants to come against you, you know that all authority has been given to Christ. He's the head of all power and authority. He's the firstborn over all creation. He's the head of the church. He has the highest place in all things and he's seated at the right hand of God consistently pleading and advocating and speaking on your behalf. This is just totally, totally awesome. You know, God has exalted him. He has elevated him to the place of highest honor and given him the name above all names. He has all the authority over all things. Hallelujah. Number six, Christ is also all sufficient because all our sins are forgiven through Christ. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He has made you alive together with Christ, having forgiven you all trespasses. Our sins separate us from God, but we are reconciled through Christ to God. We have all our sins forgiven when we are buried with Christ. We have our sins forgiven as long as we continue in faith and be not moved away. This is just all scriptures showing you that in Christ we have forgiveness. I mean, that's just totally, totally awesome. So the guilt and the shame the enemy tries to bring to you, we have forgiveness in Christ. The only thing that can separate us from Christ is our sin. And once we have forgiveness in Christ, then we can, you know, we are not, we cannot be moved. Hallelujah. Jesus is the king over Jerusalem, is the king over our lives, and he is with us. How does that make you feel going into the new year? That you are going into the new year with the, with the king over the whole earth, is the king over your life, and he is with you. There is no reason to be afraid because our God is with us. God is with us for a particular reason, among others. And what are these reasons? God is with us because God wants to be for us. When someone is with you and he wants to be for you, that means that he's going to help you through whatever challenges you have and he will fight for you. And God is with you not to spectate, not to show off, but to demonstrate, to put into action in our lives and in our situation is power. God is with us, not just to be passive, but to be active. He wants to be active in your life. God doesn't want to be passive in your life. He wants to be active. You know, there's a story in the Bible when Jesus was on the boat and there was Tom threatening his disciples and they woke him up saying, we don't need you to be passive. You're with us. They woke him up and they said, you know, because they needed him to be active and not to be passive. And they said, do you not care that we perish? You know, they were in the storm and it was as if their boat was going to turn over. Of course he does. He cares and he stilled the storm and they were fine. So God wants to be for you. Think about it. Can anything be better than knowing that God is with you? Nothing, absolutely nothing. When you are in any situation, you, when you are alone in your room, when you are in school, when you are with your friends, you know that God is with you. Nothing can be better than knowing that God is with you. Think about it. Even if you have the latest games, you have the latest of everything, without God being with you, whatever you have that is latest, it doesn't mean anything. Would you rather have that thing without God or you would have that new thing with God? I would rather have a new whatever I have with God because without God, I am nothing. So nothing can be better than knowing that God is with you. Isaiah 8.10 says, Call your counsels of war, but they will be worthless. Develop your strategies, but they will not succeed. For God is with us. 
That is what the Bible says. It's saying that whoever wants to gather, whoever wants to plan war, whoever wants, whatever they try to do, every counsel of war against you will be worthless. And there's every evil strategy against your destiny will not succeed for one single reason. And what is that reason? God is with us and God is with you. Hallelujah. You know, the, the same Isaiah 8.10, the voice translation says, go ahead, devise your plans. They will fail. Your proclamations won't matter because God is with us. Hallelujah. God is with you. Any evil plan, strategies will fail, not because of your size or your strength, but because God is with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is all sufficient. And I want you to, you know, to, to really get that into your system as you go into this year. God is all sufficient. And it matters. It really, really matters for us to know because Christ is all we need. And without him, we are nothing. Is more than enough on earth and in eternity, in life and in death. To say that Christ is sufficient is to say that there is nothing else in addition to Christ that we need for salvation, for life, for satisfaction, or for fullness. If Jesus is all that you need, then you don't need anything else. Trust me, that's right, absolutely nothing. To say that Christ is sufficient is to say that God has already given us everything we need for life and godliness through his own son. To say that Jesus is sufficient is to say that the only thing that the branch needs in order to bear fruit is to be vitally connected to the vine. And Jesus is the vine. As you stay connected to him this year, you will have all that you need. You will be all sufficient in Jesus' name. But the declaration that Christ is sufficient should not make us complacent. That means it should not make you, you know, not do anything. We need to be careful to not draw the wrong conclusion or make the wrong application. The completeness of Christ's work does not mean that we have no needs. It means that all of the needs we have are met in Christ. Hallelujah. It means that we desperately need Christ. Because all our needs are met in Christ. We need Christ in all of his fullness. We need not have half Jesus, but the whole of Jesus. We need Christ in his, all of his entirety. We need him, his redeeming power, his grace, his forgiveness, his cleansing, his power, you know, for our obedience. We need him in his supremacy over all the earth. All countries all over the world need Jesus. We need Jesus as our justifier, as our sanctifier. We need him as a savior and the Lord of the church. We need him as prophet, as priest, as the king. We need him as bread of life, as fountain of living waters. We need him as the door to walk through, the way to walk on, and the goal to which we walk the price for which we run, and the captain of our destinies. We need Jesus. We need Jesus as the alpha, as the beginning of 2021, and as the omega, the first and the last. Furthermore, we need Jesus in all of our lives. We need Jesus in forming our minds, and we need him forming our hearts. We need Jesus in the closest, in the bedroom, in the dining room, in the playroom, on the street. We need him when we play, we need him when we worship, when we work, when we, you know, we need Jesus in our churches, in our classrooms, in our homes. We need him to walk with us through the valley of humiliation. We need him to help us in the hard climb up in difficult times and to rescue us in doubting times. We need Jesus in our colleges, in our careers, in our home, abroad, in our waking, in our sleeping, in our living, even in our dying. We need Jesus in all that we are. Our need is great, but his sufficiency is greater. He is all sufficient. Our God is all sufficient. I want you to start your year with God. 
start your year with God is all sufficient. Like you have heard me say, all that you need to be, all you want to be in 2021, God is all sufficient. Do you need Jesus? Then surrender to him today. Ask him to fill you with his power and to live inside of you. Ask him to help you in 2021. I pray that the Lord will breathe upon you today, change your life totally, and his name will be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're committing your life to Christ today, just say, Lord, come into my life, come into my heart, come live in me, come dwell in me, and guide me in the path of truth. And he will do that, and his name will be glorified in you. Do you already know Jesus? Then let's pray together. I said at the beginning of this um, discussion that we are going to pray together today. So let's pray committing this year into God's hands. Father, we pray and we commit 2021 into your hands. Lord, even concerning the children, we are taking um, you know, God into all that we are, will be doing this year in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm taking all God has for me this year. I want you to say that prayer that you are taking all that God has for you this year. I'm hiding in God. Say after me, I hide myself in God. No evil will come near me because God is stronger and he is for me and with me. I receive the grace to pray this year. I receive the grace to read my Bible. I receive the grace to worship, to listen and to obey God, to be kind to others and to serve in the mighty name of Jesus. I hope you're praying. Please pray, be focused and make sure that nothing is distracting you. I want you to also pray. You have all that you need in Christ to make your 2021 successful and great in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to pray. Father Lord, we declare that all our children will have all that they need in Christ to make their 2021 successful and great in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I um, expect you to go over this prayer over and over again. Hide yourself in Christ. He is all sufficient. You take all that God has for you this year in Jesus' name. He will keep you even as you study, as you read, as you go into this year, you go in grace, you go in power in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to be successful this year is in Christ and you receive it in Jesus' name. 2021 will be a great year for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our prayer for our devotional today says, is a song and it says, You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Our Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Awesome. I hope you're power packed and ready to start your 2021 and it will be a super amazing year in Jesus name. So continue to keep safe. Make sure you wear your nose mask, your face shield when it's necessary. You wash your hands regularly. You use your hand sanitizers. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of your holiday. And when you go back to school, I wish you all the best. Take care. Bye.